Let's go. Vote first, questions later. Malady grabs the vessel with two hands and pushes it into the water. She hops on board behind you. God woken. Wait till she finds out. Salty water mists your face. Your skin prickles in bright, warm sunlight. The boat bobs forward through the water and Fort Joy shrinks behind you. Tired but victorious, the party made for the Lady Vengeance. The horrors of Fort Joy behind them. They arrived as sorcerers. They left as Godwoken. The fate of this godforsaken world now rested on their shoulders. Or at least on the shoulders of one of them. Come, come, Quirkus. Time is short. A light sea breeze kisses your cheek and carries away the smell of blood wafting up from the deck. In the distance, Fort Joy looms. I'll be damned if I ever set foot on that island again. Don't care who I have to bury. A hard-fought freedom, sure. But if spilling blood is bad, it shouldn't be so agreeable. Bad luck to let the dead linger aboard. As soon as we get moving, we ought to clear the deck. Onward now. The sooner Fort Joy disappears from the horizon, the better. Perhaps... Utterly barbaric, of course, destroying a tree and turning it into a boat. Grotesque, but, well, look at it, Quercus. A floating nest, surrounded on all sides by salt water, pure poison to a tree's root. The great acorn could never reach us out here. Well, yes, of course we'll continue our research, Quercus. We're not monsters. Still, I must admit, you were right about the shield. It proved to be more than adequate. No! Oh. <clears throat> yes, it... Uh, it seems our shield is still here, Quercus. How does something so large and ungainly sneak up on a person? <laughs> you give the giants too much credit, Quercus. I think the salty air has addled your mind. It has certainly been useful, but elegant, kind, surprisingly attractive. No, no, we have no time for your fawning. 
We may be safe, but the world is not. Come, we must return to our research. Lord, so close to escaping. Don't go any further, Godwoken. We need you alive. The ship won't sail. We had orders to search every corner of it and figure out what's blocking us. It's hewn from elven livewood. I thought I could communicate with it, but... She glances over towards a smoldering pile of ash on the deck nearby. Something is nestled within it. Fragments of scorched bone. That was Brendan. When the ship wouldn't answer my call, he touched the figurehead and it attacked him. Without warning, he burned like he was made of parchment. Her eyes flick over to the smouldering ashes once again, her head held at a despondent angle. Thank you. We were held captive together on this ship. He kept my spirits up. Now he's dead. Nothing. The ship is live wood. That much is clear. But I couldn't communicate with it. The Magisters must have done something, warped it somehow. I just don't know what. Just remember what I said, Godwoken. If you die, then this was all for nothing. Before you is a towering figurehead carved in the likeness of a dragon. It looms over the bow, its fangs bared at the open sea. At that moment, the ship serendipitously creaks beneath you, almost like it is acknowledging your observation. Searing pain races up your arm. The ship senses you. It's angry. The pain intensifies. It's spreading past your arm, across your chest. Your lungs feel like they're on fire. Hear my prayer. Show us the way forward. Deliver us from peril. Blessings to our fallen. Pray that they may find rest. The figurehead looms ahead, continuing its... Terse and Delius, hear my prayer. Show us the way forward. I remember this one. Peril. His name was Kerban. His friend's sword couldn't save him, it would appear. Spare me, Gareth. We got what we came for. This is what success looks like. 
I won't see them tossed overboard. Not here. We'll hold a proper service. What's his face and so and so would want us to get this ship sailing before all else? They died for those Godwoken, after all. You know their names, Malady. Can't you even pay them that much respect? Gareth inhales sharply, then catches you out of the corner of his eye and smiles, barely. Our guest stirs. Welcome, Godwoken. Glad to see you safely aboard. Ah, uh, very glad indeed. Too many. One too few, actually. Alexander, he's alive. Apparently, didn't hit hard enough. He's in the hold below decks. Unconscious, but alive. Question him. Someone has been hunting your kind, and Alexander fancies himself the only Godwoken worthy of ascending. As far as we know, you may even be the last still alive. If Alexander is guilty, he'll face justice. Yes, we certainly had better, but the ship won't move. She's mute. We need to free her tongue. You're welcome to try, though I doubt it'll help. What Gareth means to say is don't bother. Livewood will only move when it wants to, or in this tub's case, when it's forced to. That's right. The ship's made of an elven ancestor tree, the spirit of which is still trapped in every plank. What we need is a way to control the bloody thing. The Seekers, the survivors of us, have been combing the ship from bow to rudder. It hasn't been easy. This place is laced with dark magic. These Seekers have such a limited skill set. We lost a man in the search. Malady might not appreciate that, but I do. And I hope you do too. I'm sure the Godwoken will be able to get the ship moving. They kind of like to feel useful, don't they? It's your best that'll save us all. <sighs> Godwoken. Good. Not all of us did, though. The sooner we leave this island behind us, the better. Our survival hinges on getting this ship moving, Godwoken. We're searching every corner of it for anything that might help us. Think, damn it! Where would the Magister hide? What is it, Red? Naughty lizards. I wouldn't have taken that rune on the figurehead as a slave scar myself. Well done. We'll need to find the song that'll control it then. Well, you'll need to. Dying to hear them. Meister Siva is one of a rare breed. She'd do anything in the name of a cause, and her cause happens to be you. She's desperate to meet a living Godwoken. She'll be exceedingly pleased we're en route. We'd better not leave her waiting. She's a bit particular. 
She's the founder of these Seekers, and she's powerful. That means something when I say it. Your kind can reach astounding heights. Meister Siva can help you do just that. A place called Driftwood, host to putrid fish, putrid dwarves, and Meister Siva herself. You'll probably find it quite comfortable. What is it, Red? This is Dallas's ship, but she can't have been the only one who could get it moving. It'd be too risky, and Dallas is anything but careless. There's a way to move this ship on board, I'm sure of it. You'd be surprised. A ship like this holds many secrets. Hopefully you can discover some these Seekers might have missed. The figurehead has certainly caused a commotion lately. But then again, so have the doors downstairs. Everywhere you look, a hunk of wood looking to incinerate or stymie you. The figurehead has certainly caused a commotion lately, but they're dying to hear them. Her face crumples into a mask of concern. Her eyes are large and soulless. Why, because I care, of course. You are so very, very welcome. for will I know it when I see it The silent monk leans forward slightly and stares at you straight in the eyes. She seems eager for you to say something. The silent monk leans from one foot to the other. He seems eager to move. Let's team up, you and me. What do you say? Now, onward! Thank you. 
I must say, you may not be an Eternal, but you are certainly not as temporary as many of your fellows. You handled yourself well. Personally, I am just glad that I do not have to walk back to Reaper's Coast. Wind travel may be primitive, but it is at least efficient. Livewood? You have taken a dead elf and carved it into a pleasure yacht? I knew you people were barbarians. I had no idea you were sadists, too. Well, no matter. Whatever gets me to Reaper's Coast quickly. I have an excavation site to explore. The only treasure worth digging for. Knowledge. I was investigating a site where several artifacts of my people have been found. Some were even intact. Alas, I was not the only one there. Those red-robed idiots were scurrying about, too, trampling precious clues under their ignorant boots. They caught me when I failed to correctly respond to their questions, and dragged me here. Still, it's good to be on the move again. They simply asked me what I was doing there, and I simply told them to be gone from my lands. I may have used the phrase pathetic mortals. Come to think of it, I may have used it several times damn fools. The faster we leave them behind, the happier I shall be. Ah, yes. I have heard that your people enjoy various fermented fruits and vegetables. It often seemed to be involved in... Pardon? Was that an invitation? Were you trying to initiate some form of mating ritual? Why, that would be excellent! I have been curious about this for some time. The social interactions, the expectations, the mechanics. Come now, let's begin immediately. I shall compile my notes afterwards. Fane grabs your hand and enthusiastically pulls you behind the screen. I, uh, well, that was most unusual. I mean, I had read all the leading authorities on it, but I didn't think... It's just... That thing you did with your tongue... It was... Quite unexpected. A team? What an interesting prospect. You certainly seemed capable in Fort Joy and a companion on Reaper's Coast could be quite educational. Very well. I am open to this. I believe you normally spit on your palms to seal agreements, but I seem to lack the fluid and the desire to touch you. I hope a hearty verbal agreement will suffice. Very well. Let's be off. I got the clue I was looking for. unfair set sail for the love of all things set sail the sooner I am off this carved monstrosity the better are you certain you want to dismiss your companion yes I can imagine it might be somewhat difficult for you to forever be in my shadow go on then play in the Sun is this level of uncertainty common amongst your kind you want me to walk with you. You decide you do not, and now you are reconsidering it once more. I am almost certain this is known as flirting. I have read about it quite extensively. 
There's no accounting for taste, I suppose. Or sense. to be some clue. Dallas would have trusted someone with a secret, wouldn't she? Unless there's someone still inside. Hey! You're here! Pretty nice boat, eh? We got an upgrade. There's got to be another way to get it going, but we can't find a way into Dallas's room. Maybe you can see something we can't. The door seems like any door, at least at first. Then you notice it's unblemished wood. There is no knot, no scratch, no dent to detract from its apparent perfection. The wood groans and creaks. A face appears in the wood, tortured and tormented. A six-sided indentation is carved on its forehead, as if a gem or amulet had made a mark there. The face vanishes. The door stays resolutely closed. to me if you're looking for hired help. I've got good fighters of every stripe. They know how to keep their mouths shut too, as long as there's gold in it for them. So, what'll it be? Magister Ranley, caucus mate for the Divine Eminence vessel, the Lady Vengeance. Enough! Hey, don't I know you from somewhere? So, we've got quite the task on our hands, haven't we? I have to admit, the whole thing is very intriguing. The old band back together again, hmm? I guess that depends, doesn't it? Look at me. Hard. What do you see? Losa leans back slightly, thin arms crossed in front of her chest, and stares at you defiantly from dark eye sockets, darker and deeper set than when you first met. She blows back a lock of white hair, matted with sweat and grime, and holds back a smile from the corners of her lips. But I'm not the same, am I? I want to make sure you understand, well, the risks. You keep saying that. It won't save you. You don't get it. I'm dangerous. You have to pay attention. You have to be willing to hurt me if I'm hurting you or someone else. Can you do that? Do I ever? Still sore from that one. At the time, I wanted you to defend me. I didn't realize how bad things had gotten. I know better now. Something like that happens again. You do what needs to be done. Deal? Well, all right then. She pinches your cheek, a sparkle in her dim gray eyes. I knew I could count on you to murder me in a pinch. Let's go, Chief. behind bars suits you, murdering scum. The Seeker flexes her arms stiffly. Her joints audibly pop. She sees you draw near. I 
know you, Godwoken. <laughs> Without your help, I'd likely still be a prisoner around here, not guarding Alexander the bloody divine himself. She nods her thanks and immediately winces, laying her hand on the back of her neck. I wish. No, the Magisters kept me chained to the bulkhead. Arms held above me head, feet barely able to touch the deck. Now my joints are paying the price. a big bloody target on our backs. We took their leader and their flagship. The hammer won't stand for that. She'll be hunting for us. The Seeker throws a toxic look at the imprisoned Magister. Hardly. She's just some deckhand. If it were up to me, I'd tie her to the main mast and use her for our practice. But Malady wants her alive for now. No. They had us down below, chained up in the dark. But the Reds were up to something in here. Maybe it was just the lack of food and rest playing tricks, but oh, I swear I heard chanting and ugh, horrible moaning coming from here. But when we broke free, it was empty. Good luck getting anything out of either of them. Our special guest is out cold, and the other one ain't in much of a talking mood. All right then, just don't make me regret it. I'll keep an eye on the red until the cage is locked again. A young Magister paces around the brig, fussing over Alexander's unconscious form. She leans over and applies a damp cloth to his brow. She notices you observing her. She straightens her back and sets her jaw in a defiant scowl. Magister Ranling, Corcus mate at the Divine Eminence Vessel, Lady Vengeance. That's all the information I'm giving to any of you lot, so stow your questions, lizard. Ranley. Corker's mate, Lady Vengeance. Magister Ranley, Corker's mate of the... The Magister falls silent, but stares at you with unwavering defiance. There's a shift in the Magister's expression, a flicker of doubt. Then? I'm a good Magister, loyal. But Dallas, something about her has changed. She's toying with dark magic, like a common sorcerer. She used to, to sing to the ship. It let her control it. She had this old book of hymns and incantations. It was only ever in her hands, or else locked away in her cabin at the stern. That's all I know. Get away from him, sorcerer. That's the divine. All right. Don't harm him. I'll be watching. Bishop Alexander lies supine on a bare wire cot, 
Though unconscious, his eyes are only half closed. His swollen jaw hangs open at an odd angle. A beautiful six-sided gem rests on the bishop's chest, hung round his neck by an ordinary oiled rope. The gem sits heavily in your pouch. Bruises swell beneath his eyes, and a shallow gash zigzags from his right ear down to his beardless cheek. Unconscious, he looks more boy than bishop. Someone has wiped the bishop's hands clean and folded them neatly over his abdomen. They rise and fall in shallow, jagged swells. We've braved the joy, and I lust for further adventure. What say you? Shall we continue our journey together? You're not quite certain you'll ever sleep soundly with Sabeel in any sort of proximity, but at least she's on your side, for the moment. I found something.
You can put a price on the warriors I have for hire, but you can't put a price on the glory they'll win you. Thank you. 